So in this video, we're going to look at an example of how formulae can be discovered. So consider a pendulum. What would you expect the time period to depend on? So as the ball is swinging back and forth, what would you expect the time period to depend on? Now, you might think about, uh, well, the length of the string. Okay, so L could be equal to the length of the string. Uh, you might think that uh, the mass of uh, the ball on the string might have something to do with it. Okay, so we'll use M for mass. Now, it may not, but, uh, you know, it might be, we'll take a punt at the start and see. And also uh, the acceleration due to gravity. So G, gravity. Okay, so we think it might be linked with those three things. So we might then say that the time period is equal to L to the power of something. So let's call it alpha times M to the power of something. Let's call it beta. And then G to the power of something. Let's call that gamma. Now, it's unlikely that it would just be equal to multiplying those three things together. So there's probably some dimensionless constant out the front. We'll call that k. Okay? But that's uh, what we'll work with. So what we'll do is we'll look at the dimensions of either side of this. So the dimensions of the left-hand side, time, would just be t. And for the right-hand side, we would have L, which is a length. So that's L to the alpha. We can ignore K because it's dimensionless. Then we've got a mass, capital M, to the beta. And then we've got gravity, which is an acceleration, so meters per second per second. So that would be LT to the minus 2 to the gamma. So what I'm going to do then is rewrite this. So we've got L to the power of alpha, but I'm also multiplying it by L to the power of gamma. So L to the alpha plus gamma, adding the indices together. We've got M to the beta, and then we'll have T to the minus 2 times gamma. Now if we compare indices on either sides, because on the left-hand side, we've got no L's. Okay, so it would be L to the power of 0 on the left-hand side. So the alpha plus gamma, the index there, would have to be equal to 0. Now, we don't have any M's on the left-hand side either, so it's M to the power of 0 over here. So beta would have to be 0. But we do have t to the 1 here must be equal to the t to the power of minus 2 gamma here. So 1 must be equal to minus 2 gamma. Now, from this, we can already see that beta is 0. Gamma is going to have to be minus 1 half. Now, if gamma is minus 1 half, then alpha would have to be equal to 1 half. So we've got t is equal to k times L to the alpha, so L to the half, M to the zero, so we can leave that off, so, it's, so the mass doesn't come into it. Okay, it was a good guess, but it didn't come into it, that's fine. Then G to the gamma, which is minus a half. And so this appears to be the dimensions uh, that I need to work with, and the formula that I would need to build up. Now, you might actually know what the formula is. The actual formula is t is equal to 2 pi, which is your constant at the front, times by the square root of L over g. And that's the L to the half, g to the minus the half.